Hello and welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh. I'm also your city manager. And we have a very interesting topic today, uh, which is the city budget. And it's that time of year. We run from uh, July to June in terms of our budget. And I have our uh, budget wizard here, Rudy <laughs> Rodriguez, who's our general manager of administrative services and has done our budget for what, 17, 18 years? 17 years now. 17 years now. And uh, uh, Rudy and his staff really do a fantastic job with our budget, uh, which, which can be challenging. So let's, let's get into it and, and uh, figure out where, we, uh, where yeah. we started and where we're at, at uh, today. Well, we'll go ahead and start um, to discuss and, and just uh, some kudos to my staff. They are, they are, they're the ones who put most of this stuff together. I just kind of overview a lot of, a lot of the work. Uh, but I do stay on top of the process itself. And, you know, the, the process starts, um, you know, well, actually, the process never ends. The budget process is always ongoing. But the, from one year to another, we usually have several rounds of meetings. We start in January, December, January, February, thereabouts, in any of those months, depending on how much work is, is piled up on us. But we go through a process where we allow all of our department heads to give us what we call a base budget, meaning the minute, the minute um, what will it take for, to operate your budget? If there are no changes whatsoever, uh, taking account the increases in, let's say, fuel or other things, electricity or utilities, what will it take for you just to open your doors and not provide any additional services? And that's what we call our first round of budgets. And this year, when we got done with our, our preliminary budget, we, we realized that we were about $196,000 uh, short. And what I mean by short is using our current revenues and current expenditures and all of, all of our resources, we were about $196,000 short. Well, we already knew we had to do some changes. However, the budget doesn't stop there. It goes into a second process where you and I meet, uh, and this year we had our city, our mayor with us, which was great, and we go down all the requests that they need above and beyond the base budget. Uh, we look at staffing that they want, uh, capital improvements, uh, any type of new program that they'd like, and we add a few of those in to the mix. Well, by the time we were done, we were about $700,000 in uh, short. Uh, that's when we go back for the second round of meetings with our department heads and ask them to come up with some more money. So what we basically are do, making them do, we're forcing them to go back and look at their budgets even closer and a little bit careful to make sure that some of those numbers that they give us are not inflated, is there projects they can put off for another uh, time, and they'll come back and give us a, um, an, another set of numbers and eventually balance our budget. This year we were real fortunate that our largest departments being uh, fire, PD, uh, and the recreation center, those are general fund budgets that, that take a, a, the biggest hit, uh, were able to allow us to get the budget balanced. And this year we're, we're, we proposed um, an 84 million, 80, almost $85 million budget to, to the city council. Our tentative budget increased by nearly $60,000 uh, to $85.1 million. And as I mentioned earlier, um, the budget process is always ongoing and we are at a point where we had to make some changes. We found a few errors and a few things that had to get adjusted. So we were, we were actually had, had a small increase from our proposed or our tentative. You know, and, and, and let me just add, because I think it's important, like you were saying, the, the budget process is, is ongoing year round, and mm -hmm. a big piece of that is the city council's strategic plan. They get together and, and put together a, a strategic plan that has mm -hmm. action items, has goals, action items in there, and that really forms the basis for any changes any adjustment to the budget mm -hmm. that we need because obviously what they're doing is they're listening to their constituents and um, you know what they feel are priorities what they feel are needs and we adjust accordingly Correct. and and so a lot of times when um, you know a department comes forward with an increase in a budget to implement a program or to improve a program it's it's really facilitated by that you know ongoing dialogue between our council members and the public correct. you know what is the council or what is the public want that is translated through the correct. through the council correct 
And uh, just a, a note, the, our tentative budget uh, goes to our council this upcoming Tuesday on June the 7th, I believe. And uh, that basically will put the bottom line on the budget. Cannot exceed that amount. We can always reduce it, move numbers around, but we cannot exceed that amount. So that's that's part of our, the budgeting process is the tentative. You know, and and that's an important part that I think people get really confused uh, about. And I know we have a uh, a uh, chart here, or not a chart, but a diagram of, you know, the the kind of the original budget, the revised budget. Yeah, get into that a little bit, Rudy, and, and explain, you know, what that eighty. You mentioned right. it, eighty-five million dollar budget. What that really represents. The the eighty-five million being the original budget is usually planned about three months into a year for the following year. In other words, um, in January, we only have uh, so three months worth of records being July, July, August, and September in January, and we're trying to plan for the following year, and so we don't have too much to work with. But we go ahead and throw it in there, because the way Arizona is structured, we have to have any, anything that we potentially have, think that we might get, we have to include it. It's called our budget allocation. If you don't have a budget allocation, you cannot spend it. So what we basically do, we, we always put in all of our reserves, we put in any type of, of grants, whether small or large, uh, we put in all the grants, whether they're going to happen or not, because we need that budget allocation. If we plan to do any f type of financing, we include it, whether it comes to fruition or not. So we have to plan for everything in, in the original budget. When we get to our, to our revised budget, we've already started getting some, a track record. We're already three months and we're talking about the current budget. So we already have a, starting to have, get a, a formulate an idea of where we're going to end at the, at, by, the, by year end, six, eight yeah. months later. But we still have all those months to work through. Projects that we are sure we're not going to get done, we start to cut them out, reducing our budget. Financings, we start to cut out that we're not going to do. Or projects that we almost certain we're not going to get done or accomplish, we put off to the following year. Then we get to the last section, which are which is our actual. That happens after we've closed our year and all of our expenditures. Those are true numbers as to what was actually spent. So for the audience out there, it's that column that says actual. That's what we actually spend Correct. in the year. Um, Correct. Not what we started out with. We we know starting out right. that the original budget, we're not going to spend all that. Correct. We're not going to get all those revenues. Correct. And we can't spend it unless we have the revenues. Consequently, really, the reality is that the actual represents the true budget for the city. The true expenditures, exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, another another thing that uh, you mentioned was general fund. And uh, talk about the difference between the general fund versus <coughs> enterprise fund. There's, there, there's, 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 only, there's only two requirements in the state of Arizona. You have to have general fund and you have to have a HER fund. We have special other funds. Uh, we have a, a special revenue, which includes HERF, transit, library, and we have an enterprise fund. Um, enterprise funds have to be self-sufficient. That's why we have water, and water utilities. That's why they have their rates structured the way they have, because they have to be able to pay for all of their services, their capital, any type of debt. The general fund is, is basically, it's a, as it says, general, it's all-encompassing. If our utilities funds, being our enterprise funds, do not have sufficient revenue, the general funds has to transfer money to make them sufficient. The general fund transfers money to the library, about 800000 a year. The general fund transfers money to HERF, two to three hundred thousand dollars a year and and herf is is our highway, highway user, user revenue fund exactly what people pay into gas tax correct we get a portion of that from the state not as much as we should right uh, because the state legislature has mm. seen it in their wisdom to take some of that money and pay for other state programs mm -hmm. and we'd love to see that money come back here and correct. be used for streets and sidewalks and those kind of things correct so the general fund basically is a fund that's going to be responsible for all other funds if they fall into deficit. Uh, but our general fund is the one that provides the, the some of the most noticeable services. Uh, fire, police, parks and recreation, our recreation center, uh, our building, 
uh, parks and maintenance, and uh, building maintenance, public works, all of those are funded through our general fund. And, and it's probably important to state that that we can, as you stated, use the general fund to support enterprise uh, accounts. Right. But we do not support the general fund with enterprise money, even though legally you could do that. Correct. We don't do it in this city as a matter of policy. Correct. Our, our, our council has always been real supportive of it, and I have too, and I know you are too, also very supportive of them being totally independent. We don't provide them with any, any cash. They don't provide us with any cash except for services that they need, such as payroll, uh, HR support, IT support. Right. But outside of that, we don't, we don't establish their rates to help fund any other program except their own. Right. In fact, the only one I think we're still working on is the airport. We want to make the airport as uh, self-sufficient and, and an enterprise fund as much as possible. We still do support them through uh, general fund monies, but um, we're hopefully going to be able to narrow that gap in the future. Over the years, we've, been, we've narrowed that gap quite a bit, uh, and nowadays we, we pretty much are, they can support their operations. It's usually when it comes to funding the grant, the matching portion is when we have to support them a bit, but they're getting very close to, to being even self-supporting there too. Let's go ahead and take our next break, and uh, you know we could probably spend a couple of shows on the budget, mm -hmm. but uh, come back and join us and we'll get through as much of this as we possibly can. You're gonna take good care of him, right? Oh, like he was my own dog. Trust me. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's good. Not my baby! Sorry. <laughs> you don't want your groomer distracted. No one wants you distracted behind the wheel. It only takes one second to change your life forever. Distracted driving involves anything that takes your focus off the road. Stand with me. Be drug free. Stand with me. Be drug free. To make a difference, we must stand together. Stand with me. Be drug free. Supporting our families and listening to our teens. Stand with me. Be drug free. Stand with me. Be drug free. We are all one. No one is immune. Stand with me. Be drug free. Let's stand together for a healthier community. Stand with me. Be drug free. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh, and I'm here with uh, Rudy Rodriguez, and we're talking city budget. So with that, Rudy, uh, where does the money come from? Well, we have money coming in from several sources. Um, traditionally, our biggest source for the general fund, of course, is our sales tax. And uh, we, have, uh, we also have inter intergovernmental funds, uh, which are usually our state shared revenues, uh, any type of contracts that we might have uh, outstanding. We have services and charges that come in uh, for, serve, for things that we do for the city, licenses and permitting uh, for building permits and such so that we can go ahead and, and uh, we collect fees for certain things that we have to do outside that are not normal for the, the, the regular uh, citizen, but specialty type uh, fees and licenses that we have to charge. And then we have miscellaneous revenues. But a, a big portion of our revenues that we seem to see in our budgets are traditionally what we call uh, other financing sources. And that's, a big, that's the biggest chunk of our budget. And that's traditionally uh, any type of reserves that we have. It also includes any type of financing. And usually our financings are well over a million dollars and sometimes over $10 million. Uh, so that 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 comprises that comp comp excuse me that that pretty much makes up most of our budget is all these different funds that we have that are broken out by different segments. So the the biggest is sales tax, right? And Cottonwood doesn't have a city property tax, not neither a primary or a secondary property tax, and so we we pretty much survive on that sales tax along with state shared revenues. Correct. And, and you know, I get this all the time from people who live outside the city. Why do we have to pay extra 
to use the rec center or become part of a, you know, a recreation program. The, the reason is, is because we don't get state shared revenues for those people that live outside the city, mm -hmm. um, which is substantial. Um, and so consequently, people inside the city are actually shouldering more of the tax burden. Uh, and so it's only fair that people from outside the city that come in to use city facilities or programs, that they help subsidize those programs as well. And so that's why there's that differential rate. People go, well, I come in and I shop here. I, I do that. Well, people inside the city shop here too. Correct. But they also pay state shared revenues. And so that's the big difference, and I think that's important for people to know. The other thing that is very concerning is um, that we're a model uh, mm -hmm. that's set up on the basis of sales tax. Mm -hmm. um, the city's strategy in terms of economic development has been based on creating a retail sales environment. We have Home Depot, we have Walmart, you know, we hope to bring more and more retail opportunities here, which is a great model. And we get people from all, all over the Verde Valley who come here to shop, which we greatly appreciate. The problem is mm -hmm. that we're beginning to see is a lot of people are shopping on the internet. And we're beginning to feel that impact of people shopping on the internet. So. Uh, something that uh, uh, you can help with in terms of supporting uh, local services and local retailers is, is shop local um, as much as you can. So correct. Anything else you want to add on that, Rudy? And, and that's and that's a fact. Back when we did away with the property tax back in around '85 or so, I, I don't think internet sales was exactly on uh, anyone's yeah. mind. No, exactly. Uh, but nowadays, uh, we all know, you know, you shop, I shop, we all shop on the internet. And uh, yes, and it does impact us quite yeah. a bit because unfortunately, if you don't have a, a nexus, meaning a, a site on in within your uh, municipality, you pretty much do not collect any sales tax. Yeah, and this so. wouldn't be a, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a bad thing if this was fixed nationally because every jurisdiction out there has got to be struggling with this a little bit in mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, you're losing a good part of your sales tax when people buy online. And so we need to fix that nationally so that we can still provide police officers, firefighters, roads, those Correct. kind of things. Correct. So where does the money go? Well, uh, one of the things we need to realize is that the city of Cottonwood <clears throat> is primarily service-based. And when you become a service-based uh, organization, your your some of your largest costs are going to be personnel, and that's that's where we're at right now. Our our personnel costs are are one of the highest uh, expenditures that we have <clears throat> uh, of, of our budget. About nineteen nineteen point six million dollars as goes to to personnel. The rest of it goes into such things as operating supplies, contracts that we have, uh, being legal or engineering or consulting firms, uh, services and charges for things that are done for for us or things that we need to get done in the city that we cannot do or, or need some help doing. And then, of course, a lot of it also is, is our capital outlay. And, of course, that's being, let's say, for example, uh, streets that need to get taken care of, our airport, transit programs, water, sewer, and so forth. So, uh, and then lastly, of course, we also have debt service that's included in there. Okay. And then I know one of the things that's always critical is uh, to make sure we have money on hand mm -hmm. for whatever occurrence may happen, uh, an emergency, a disaster, um, you know, some other um, funding need that was totally unex unexpected, mm -hmm. that we have those funding opportunities available. So Correct. talk a little bit about um, the reserves and, and how, how we budget for those. Certainly. Um, Years ago, I, I, I looked around for a rule of thumb for our reserves that we had. We covered, we had about a month's worth of reserves on hand. Contacting the, the Government Finance Officers Association, they recommended that we should maintain for our size community about 15 percent 
uh, we actually carry two months worth of previous year's expenditures being 16.66% and this year's is a little over $3 million worth of reserves. Now that reserve doesn't necessarily mean you have cash in the bank for that. That means you have cash, investments, uh, and some assets that can easily be t t converted to cash. That's what that $3 million is, is, is for. Now we also, council has al always instructed us, uh, or has instructed us to keep at least a million dollars cash for a capital, uh, in a capital accumulation fund. You may recall years ago, we used about $300,000 to help um, the senior center to complete their, their building, and we took it out of those particular reserves. We also have what we call undesignated reserves, and that's basically an allocation that the council would always like to have uh, set aside in case they have something, a project that would come up. Uh, traditionally, we set it at about 100000 this year, we only set it at about 49000 and that was only so that we could go ahead and balance the budget. We have two other reserve funds that are currently not being funded, and they're not being funded because those are supposed to be for capital projects. One of them is for public safety, one of them is for general fund, and obviously we've got debt service already for the general fund and the public safety with the communication center. So that money that would traditionally go into these two funds go into uh, those two uh, debt services that we have. Okay. But all, overall, we're sitting on well over $4 million worth of reserves. Which, which really is important from the standpoint that, again, if there was some catastrophe here where, you know, city businesses were shut down and we weren't accumulating those revenues, mm -hmm. we would still, I mean, particularly our police, our water, our sewer, all of that would have to continue on. And it's mm -hmm. important that we have the, the backup funding to make sure it does. Correct. And uh, so that's why we keep so much reserve on hand. And really, it's right. not an excessive amount. No, no, it, it's not an excessive amount. And, and we've been, we've been uh, praised you know, several times when we've gone out for debts, for any kind of debt, because of the way we, we maintain our reserves. Uh, those are real important to anyone who's, who's doing any type of bonding. And they've looked at ours and said that it's well appropriate. It's not excessive. It's not too small. OK. Let's go ahead and take our next break, and then we're going to come back and, and do an overview of the budget real quick and, and kind of hit some of the rumors that fly around out there about the city and the city budget. So make sure you come back and join us. You're gonna take good care of him, right? Oh, like he was my own dog. Trust me. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's good. Not my baby! Sorry. <laughs> you don't want your groomer distracted. No one wants you distracted behind the wheel. It only takes one second to change your life forever. Distracted driving involves anything that takes your focus off the road. Stand with me. Be drug free. Stand with me. Be drug free. To make a difference, we must stand together. Stand with me. Be drug free. Supporting our families and listening to our teens. Stand with me. Be drug free. Stand with me. Be drug free. We are all one. No one is immune. Stand with me. Be drug free. Let's stand together for a healthier community. Stand with me. Be drug free. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh. And I'm here with Rudy Rodriguez, our city budget wizard. And uh, we're going over the city budget for this next fiscal year. And um, so we're really to the point of the budget overview. And I think what we want to do is start um, talking about the, uh, we ended up having to eliminate a couple of police officer positions in a uh, a dispatcher position for a public safety communication uh, center. T talk a little bit about that because I think that's, I think there's some misunderstanding about why we did that mm -hmm. and um, that somehow this was connected to Thunder Valley Rally. Well, 
and 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 I think rightfully so. And part of part of the the, the reason I think is because the numbers are so close, 150 yeah. to 150 or thereabouts. But in reality, the, the the commitment for Thunder Valley was not done over during the budget. It was actually done months ago when council met and decided that we were going to go through with with Thunder Valley Rally. Once right. they made that decision months ago, before the budget started. We had no choice but to put it in the budget, so that has no bearing on what we, on the the cuts. the 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 issue here is, we we every year we were we were we were budgeting for all of our police officers, as you know, and the public the public has see, seen it is, um, every every police department is being painted with the same paintbrush. Things are happening all over the, the country and all over the world, and there's been a lot of bad press for police. Unfortunately, our great police department is getting hit the too. The same paintbrush, yeah. Exactly. So, consequently, we're having hiring issues ourselves. So, what we when we went through the budget, we already had several, quite a number of openings op open, and our chances of actually hiring those positions were very were going to be slim to none. So what we did in order to balance the budget, we figured, well, we're not going to fill them. So why are we even budgeting when we can use it, put you put that money to good use somewhere else? Same way with our communication specialists. You know, if 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 we're going to budget for ten people, when we know we can only you know we can only be able to keep eight of them because we can't hire anymore, why are we budgeting for a full ten? We can use that money better somewhere else. That's why we've done this. However, at the same time we're doing this, we did request for council to go ahead and give you the authority that if a good candidate came by and we could find a funding that you would be allowed to add that one of those two positions back because we're, we won't go without one for providing great service and second we, we want to make sure we take the opportunity to, to get a good candidate into our police off department if we possibly can and an opportunity arises so council has agreed that that would be a good move and, and we'll when if, if it does happen we will find some way to fund it well you know and, and I can speak from a little bit of experience on the police positions in that we're also up against every other agency in the state and across the nation. I was just recently down in Phoenix and billboards on alongside the freeway for Phoenix PD advertising for police officers, mm -hmm. and they're looking for about 300. And you know they start in the mid 50,000. We're down around 40 something. It's it's tough to compete, and so um, yeah, I mean mm -hmm. to balance the budget, we took two of these positions out, but I'd be happy, and I know the council would be too, to fill these if we can find the candidates to to meet the standards. And uh, that, that gets a little tough too. So if you know anybody out there who would love a career in law enforcement, and, and for me who spent 30 years in it, it's a great career. Um, also our police and fire dispatchers, another great career helping people. Uh, if you know anybody, contact us, uh, contact our HR department, and let's get them on board because we need some quality people out there uh, making sure we're safe. So with that, um, let's go on to uh, the uh, finish up the, the budget overview. And um, we, we did get last year, we uh, had requests for positions or mm -hmm. to refill positions. And, um, um, you know, we weren't able to do that. And so uh, we were, were in need of a building official, which is great because mm -hmm. that means the construction industry, the development industry is, is going to town out there. Um, there was a, um, and these are actually positions we've eliminated over the year. These right. weren't ones that we were um, requesting. So Correct. you can see where we've actually reduced the budget uh, over seven hundred thousand dollars over the last couple of years. Correct. Correct. And uh, we continue to look for those efficiencies to make sure our balance, our budget is balanced. Now, uh, you know, and and people may say, well, wait a minute, y you know, your revenues are going up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing about a five percent increase in right. revenues per year. Why aren't you getting better? And and this may be some of it here. I mean, we're 
we're paying more for health insurance. Right. Um, just like everybody else out there, we're, we're at the mercy of uh, private industry. And when gas costs go up or, um, you know, parts costs go up, we have to absorb those costs. And, um, you know, one that's, that's hit us, not as bad as everybody else is health care costs. Correct. We've been real fortunate, you know, we, we, we were still a service agency uh, more than anything else, so we, we, put, we do have a tendency to protect our employees because they're the ones who are out there taking care of and producing what our citizens want, services. Um, this year we didn't provide a cost of living adjustment, and this is its third year that we have provided. We have a longevity program that's been in, it's in, around <laughs> since 2007, and, and we funded, funded it one lunch. year. Uh, and since 2007. Our health insurance um, has been averaging roughly 6% uh, for, for, for every year, and obviously that's, le that's higher than what we have revenues coming in. But we're real fortunate this year we merged with another pool and uh, our, our increase will only be 4%. But considering the national trend of double digits, we're, we're in relatively good shape there. Uh, retirement, that's a whole different story. Yeah, that's hurt us bad. Unfor unfortunately, um, you know, in the news there's been a lot of I c concern of over pensions and such about uh, the liability and unfunded liabilities out there, and it's not a cottonwood issue. This is a worldwide issue, a global issue where, uh, you know, investments have, have suffered. Many of them were during the recession. Exactly, were yeah. funded well over 100 percent before the recession. This last great recession just took a beating on them, and consequently, many of those are unfunded, and, and so is PSPRS. Uh, unfortunately, uh, GASB 68 moved that entire liability away from the pension system and moved it right into our books, yeah. and right. consequently, so, we're hit hard. So, from the state pension system to the city, Correct. we have now acquired that liability. Correct. Which, which you know, I, I get it, but why didn't they do it when it was 140% funded as opposed to when it was unfunded, <laughs> underfunded? You know, it would, it would have been it's, great. It's all a matter of timing, I guess. But, you know, we're our, our, our rates, especially for our police and fire, have gone up dramatically. Um, and to no fault to them. This yeah, is just yeah. the way the system is. It's trying to get back on its feet, and, and that's all there is to it. So r real quick, because we're running out of time here, um, you know, we talk about, again, estimated salary and benefit costs, and, um, you know, there's talk out there from a small group that says, oh, city employees are way overpaid. The reality is we're consistent with the market. All you got to do is go out and look at uh, what the market is around here in Yavapai County. Our benefits and our salaries are consistent. And the reason we know that is we have studies that are done by outside consultants who tell us that that's the fact. Correct. And, and, and it's broken out by different, different funds pay for all those salaries that are, that are noted. You know, real quick, I think it's important also to uh, show the funding that we provide to agencies, nonprofits outside the city. Um, you know, for instance, the Old Town Association, the Senior Center, we provide them with 55000 a year, Humane Society, 40, over 40000 a year. You know, and these are functions that if they weren't there, we'd probably be trying to provide them anyway. So this is money well spent, and, uh, you know, we'll continue to do these things as, as long as the city budget allows. Um, you know, finally, you mentioned it. We're now into the process of um, budget hearings, right. and uh, so, what's the schedule for that? Uh, on uh, June the seventh, I believe it is Tuesday, we have the first budget hearing to, to set the bottom line, a tentative budget, and then two weeks later, on the twentieth, um, on the twentieth, is that right? This, no, it's this, actually this the sixth. Yeah, June sixth is 6th. the first meeting. Next. Next Tuesday, we have right. the uh, the first hearing. And then on the 20th, we have a second public hearing and adoption of the final budget. Uh, and then uh, we have our budgets uh, up online. 
Uh, you can find them at cottonwoodaz.gov 168 slash 168 slash financial transparency. And while you're there, you can visit our new website. <laughs> uh, and you can always just give me a call if you have any questions. I encourage people to call or come by our offices at 816 North Main Street. And our phone number is 340-2710, and that's the direct line to my office. And certainly, um, you know, if you don't want to come down to the council meeting, uh, you can catch the uh, council meetings on Verde Valley Television. You know, tune in um, and watch uh, the budget process as it, as it comes about. Um, you know, again, I, Rudy and his staff have done a great job. Uh, our council is very diligent about expenditures uh, for the last 17 years, we've mm -hmm. received a, a government uh, finance award for the uh, transparency of our budget. And, uh, you know, I, I can assure you, you're in good hands. Uh, Cottonwood is in, um, you know, sustainable mm -hmm. shape. Uh, although we struggle with revenues, I mean, we're going to balance the budget every year as required by law. We always need your input, need your help, so please don't hesitate to uh, participate, and certainly if you have any questions, give us a call. Come back and join us again on Inside Cottonwood. Thank you.